Hey everyone, this is Dave coming at you again with another ZBrush tutorial, and today we're going to talk about proportion and how you can nail proportions on your next head sculpt, either by getting things aligned exactly where they normally are or by moving them around and being as stylized and as off the beaten path as, as you choose to be. So what I've done is I've loaded up a head sculpt here, and let's say you're just beginning and you've got the basic skull shape going on and you're like, oh man, you know, I wonder where the eyes go. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to load up a guide I've created here as an SVG file. So go to uh, Z, go to Z plugin, text 3D and vector shapes, new SVG. I'm going to load up two divisions. And then the way this works is from the front view, you position the bottom bar with about where the bottom of the jaw goes, and then the top bar with about the top of the skull. And then what you'll find, and actually there's a bunch of hair in this mesh, so I'm going <laughs> to just sort of guess. Uh, what you'll find then is that the middle bar lines up where the eyes go on a normal type person. So if you're just starting out, you can actually throw this guide into your scene and then turn on, actually let's switch here, and turn on transparency mode, and then you can wind up sculpting right through this. So you can actually put a marker and say, okay, well, this is about where my eyes are going to go, and you can get that geometry placed. Or if you're quite a bit a ways into your sculpt and you want to verify, you know, maybe some things have moved around, but you want to verify that your eyes are still well placed, you can actually then just show this subtool and look at it from the front and double check your progress. So another one of these that we'll look at helps you place the nose. And this is another fun one here. So under Z plugin, text 3D and vector shapes, new SVG, we're going to load up three divisions. And this works in a similar manner. So we'll give this a moment to load up. And what one does is, again, we place the bottom marker at the bottom of the chin, and then the top marker at about where Andy Loomis calls the hairline. So it's sort of like where the part would be, I guess, on a male, or sort of where the, the hair kind of comes together uh, with this sort of a, a part style. And then what you find is that the bar below the top bar is about where the eyebrows go, and then the bar below that is the bottom of the nose. So again, if you're starting out with your sculpt, you can turn on transparency mode. Actually, let's flip this a little. You can turn on transparency mode, and you can put a mark here where the nose is going to go, and then a mark here where your eyebrows are, and then you can dive in and sculpt that geometry. Or again, if you're a bit into your sculpt, and maybe some things have shifted and you want to verify that things are still looking normal, you can turn the subtool back on, switch to your front view, and be like, okay, yeah, I think things are still lining up. So another one I will show you guys is actually one of my favorites here, and this is involved in placing the lips, and hold on. <laughs> my computer has been a little bit funky because of the screen recording software. Yeah, so it's pretty much involved with getting the lips to line up properly with your with your face geometry. So if we go to Z plugin, text 3D and vector shapes again, new SVG, we go and load one of these guys called six divisions. This will take a sec to load in here. What we do with this is we line up the top bar with the base of the nose. And then the bottom bar lines up. Whoa! The bottom bar lines up with the base of the chin again, sort of like a common marker. And then what you'll find. Let me zoom in a little bit here. What you'll find. Let me pan up just a touch. Okay. So what you'll find is that the bar below the top bar is about where the top of the top lip goes, and then the bar below that is where the lips meet, and then the bar below that is where the bottom of the bottom lip is, and then this weird little kind of half bar is about where that divot that goes between the bottom lip and the chin falls. So again, once you've set up the major features of your face, you can add this, position this under the nose, and then line this up at the bottom of the chin, and then be able to have a, a quite good references to where your lips go. Or again, if you want to make the lips like extra big or move them up and down, you at least have a reference for what for what normal like what normal looks like. And once more, if you were in the beginning stages of your sculpt, you could again turn on transparency mode and sculpt right through this. 
and you know place well actually you wouldn't have to place a marker there you know you can place a marker at this line and this line and this line and maybe even this guy to guide uh, where your sculpt is going and if you're well into your sculpt maybe some things have shifted as I demonstrated once more you can have the subtool hidden and then turn it back on go to this front view and double check that things are still lining up maybe even if you've used the move tool quite a bit so okay so then the last one of these measurements I will show you guys is actually one of the easier ones so it involves placing the ear and it doesn't require a special tool or guide and actually let me turn the hair off quickly here. and essentially what you do is you use the transpose tool and you just draw out a transpose line from the front of the skull or the back of the skull at about eye level and then what you'll find is this this circle in the center is where like the top left of the ear goes so it makes this you know little bend and then that top left section is where the ear falls so if you're just starting out, you can actually draw this line, position your cursor where the circle is, hide this, and then make a mark in your sculpt. Or if you've already you know, done a bit on your sculpt and have shifted some things around, you can say, oh, you know, is my ear too far back or maybe too far forward or too high? You can actually draw this guy here, guide here, and double check that that all looks proper. So, okay, cool. So those are the guides I wanted to show you guys today and hopefully you found this useful. If you liked this video, feel free to like and subscribe, and then I will have these SGV files up on my Gumroad and my Patreon, so feel free to say hi to me there and check that stuff out. And then also I will have a link to the artist who made this sculpt, the very talented Rumpelstiltskin, who's a sculptor out of Russia. So, okay, I hope you guys have a great day, and happy ZBrushing. Bye-bye.